It's Jeannie here. Today I am joined by Captain Dale Black. He is a survivor of a really severe, deadly plane crash, but his story is miraculous and can be seen in the new film, After Death. Captain Dale, thank you for joining me. A pleasure to be here with I, you. Yeah. I was so moved by your story. Um, you start off the film, how powerful is that? And I, I still can't believe that you survived. And that's besides the fact that you survived and also had an, uh, an experience in that time period from right before me and Jesus to coming back to, to yourself here with us. Um, talk about that. Talk about, had you ever experienced anything like this before or heard of anything like this before? Well, to, to put the record straight, this occurred, for me, it occurred over 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, there was nothing uh, talked about back then about an after-death or near-death experience. These are terms that came much, much later. I never heard about this in school or church or so. It was very much not on my radar. Uh, but aviation was. I wanted to fly. I, I, I took a flight when I was 14 around the world. It changed my life. My parents, we all saved up our money and we went around the world and boy, when that trip was over I knew I wanted to be a pilot. So later when I graduated from high school I started taking flying lessons. My first lesson, I was in love. <laughs> I had found the love of my life, which was my vocation yeah. of flying. It just fit. I just knew that I belonged in the air. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of pilots are that way, yeah. especially in my day. Uh, but uh, th this is what happened. And, and about a year later, I was a licensed pilot. I had, had gone through college a whole year. I was on a baseball scholarship. Um, I had a great 57 Chevy, <laughs> so, so I mean, what, what could be better? <laughs> but, uh, but I'm only 19, of course, and uh, it was on takeoff on the morning right, right here in the Hollywood Burbank Airport, a few miles from this location. Uh, we were on takeoff, we got about 100 feet off the ground, and something all of a sudden went wrong with the aircraft and I didn't know what it was but you could hear the engines going you you it was not normal yeah. and then all of a sudden the guy in the right seat Chuck my flight instructor mentor and friend he pointed and said let's land in that clear area over there and I looked out and I thought well this is what a golf course yeah. uh, a city park okay uh, we're gonna land I don't know why but we're gonna land in a golf course yeah. and I knew that we would be in the headlines of the newspaper but I never thought for a moment that we were going to get hurt yeah. and uh, at the last moment he grabbed the flight controls turned them all the way left pulled them back against his chest and strangely I'm looking at him seeing the fear in his face and this is a man who had no fear in my mind uh, his last words was oh my god and then our left wing tip clipped the tops of, now I know, a hundred foot tall trees. We clipped them at the 80 foot level. Just clip, clip, clip. It turned the airplane about 20, 25 degrees to the left. Mm -hmm. And then in front of us is this large building uh, uh, capped with a mosaic dome. And we crashed right into the uh, top of that dome, five feet from the top. Yeah. Now what a lot of people don't know is that we impacted this mausoleum in the memory in the middle of a cemetery and uh, they don't recognize the fact that the impact of that mausoleum is what killed the other two pilots because the impact speed was 135 miles an hour mm -hmm. and our airplane stopped suddenly and there was, it wasn't like we glanced or bounced off of it. We impacted it and fell backwards. So the 135 mile an hour impact is what caused the blunt trauma yeah. to all three of our brains. Yeah. And they were killed by that. Uh, the autopsies reported the, the, the death was caused 
by that blunt trauma from that monument. In addition, all three of us fell 70 uh, feet to the ground. Yeah, you're, you're a miracle. <laughs> well, I take no pride in this. I was in that airplane. I uh, just expected it to be another day of flying, which I loved. And so I can't take any pride in the fact that I'm here today alive and well. But I can say that there is a God, and he answered the prayers of my grandparents who prayed for me every day by name. Uh, since I was five, I heard my grandparents always praying for me. And uh, you see, I say all this to say this, all three pilots, we were within inches of each other, and we hit that monument which caused the death of two, and I alone survived. Then we fell 70 feet to the ground, and we all landed together, boom, 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 within five feet of each other. Now, I lived, and they didn't. Of course, some say that I, I died on the site. I technically don't say that I died, because I can't prove it. But I can say that I was above my body. Yeah. I can't prove that either, but you I know saw, that I was. Yeah, you saw your body there laying with the I other pilots. Yeah, I did. I saw my body. I looked down, and I thought, wow, look at that. Um, I died so young. Oh, my gosh. I had a whole life to live. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what poor boy. <laughs> poor me. And then all of a sudden, about 20 seconds later, for some reason, I could still figure time, you know, a little yeah. bit. Uh, and I realized, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't feel any pain at all. Mm -hmm. I'm not in any trouble. I'm just mm -hmm. looking down at my body and it all hit me. Yeah. Uh, how do I explain this? I now knew something I had never learned. And this became a pattern. I began, I began to learn things over and over and over again that I had never learned. Mm -hmm. I understood them and I never learned them. Mm -hmm. So this is, becomes a, a way of life all of a sudden. And uh, I realized that I am a spirit. And I have a soul and I lived in a body or I used to live in a body. Every person watching this video is a spirit. And you just had this knowledge instantly that you were separated in that way. It was it was very easy to yeah. connect the dots right. because there I was alive, feeling in fact more alive than ever before. And somehow knowing that I can still think, I still have my mind. Yeah. I have emotions. I was sad and then now all of a sudden I'm not sad. Oh. My emotions are part of my soul. Yeah. And I have my will. The will is always there. That's something God made that. But we all have a soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. Yeah. But we are a spirit. Yeah. The Bible, I learned this later, the Bible calls the spirit and the heart the same. Yeah. We are, the, what is the heart of a man, you know? Yeah. And the, the, the heart of a woman is the spirit. And, and the Bible calls the spirit. So we, that's the real us, mm -hmm. is our spirit. That's the, what lives eternally. Mm -hmm. And our soul, we can adjust that. We can change our will. We can submit our will to God's will. Mm -hmm. We can have desires. We can think. We can learn. Uh, yeah. The soul is different, but it also lives eternally. And this, so this experience, it deepened your faith with God at this point. I mean, when you come back and, you know, we re you recount everything in the film and I can't wait for people to see that. But would you describe this experience? I mean, you're here now. This is a testimony that is going to encourage people to really consider their life, their journey and what comes after uh, your testimony. But would you say this deepened your faith in God and... Yes, ma'am. It, it deepened my faith, but way more than that. It deepened is a true word, but it overhauled it. It, it put it on steroids. It, uh, <laughs> it turbocharged it. It's like taking a propeller-driven airplane and putting a jet, jet in it, but no, a rocket on it. You know, it just it completely 
uh, transformed me. And it, it was all, oh, it's hard to talk about, but it was all ele uh, relevant. And I could see the change in me when I awoke mm -hmm. from the coma. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in a coma for three days, and I woke up on the morning of the fourth day in a hospital nearby, St. Joseph's Hospital in Burbank. And uh, when I woke up, um, there was a nurse in the room, but she didn't know I was waking up, and I was, I was looking and going <gasps> inside. I couldn't talk, but I was thinking, oh my goodness gracious, look at everything. Look at the colors. <laughs> Wow. Look at the, listen to this music, and the the music faded away. But I'll never forget that music fading away. And I'm waking up to all these colors, and wow. you know, you know what it's like to walk into a movie theater, right? A 3D movie. Yeah. And you have you have your glasses in your hand, so you're looking at the movie. It's blurry, blurry. and you know, it's not real clear. And then you put on the glasses, and whoa, you know, oh my gosh. Uh, and it changes everything. Well, it was like that, mm -hmm. times two or three. Mm -hmm. I could see dimensions that made no sense, mm -hmm. and so I started speaking. And now, I don't remember this exactly, but they told me this, the doctor, the nurse. I, I got to know the doctor really well. We became mm -hmm. friends for life. Oh, beautiful. And he, too, saw what God had done, mm -hmm. saw the miracles God did, which we haven't talked about yet. But he surrendered his heart and his life to Jesus. We became brothers in the Lord all the way up until his uh, departure of this earth. He's waiting for me now, by yeah. the way. Uh, but I woke up and I said, what happened to my eyes? What happened to my eyes? And they th thought that I was talking about my injured eyes. Uh, I had a uh, right eye was cut down the middle. I had to be stitched together. They actually thought they should take it out, put a glass eye in later. Mm -hmm. My dad said, no, 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 you put that, no, no, you put that eye back in there. And so they did. And they said, you, they said, you watch what God will do. <laughs> I'm looking right at you. You're a miracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was fortunate to, uh, they didn't take my eye out, but I had my eye stitched and gauze and all, but I didn't know that. I thought I was looking out of two beautiful eyes, but with four or five or six dimensions. Wow. And I was saying, what's wrong with my eyes? What happened to my eyes? What happened to my eyes? Wow. They said, you've been injured. That's not what I was talking about. We were talking about Where did dimensions. I get the colors? Where did I get the dimensions? What's all? And I could see, now I know. Yeah. I, I couldn't explain it then. I could see the first dimension. Wow. The first dimension is the spiritual dimension in this room. There are angels here. Because you're here, there's angels here. Your mm. angels are here. Mm. There are also demons here. Mm. Demons that we have authority over. Right. They do not have authority over us. That's right. They do have authority on this, in this earth. If we do not take the authority in Jesus' name and, take, and get rid of them yeah. and take authority over them. But in this room, there is this dimension. And it's everywhere we go. And that's the first dimension. And we have height and depth and yeah. width and all. Okay, got it. But the first dimension, this is me talking. The first dimension is the spiritual dimension. And that's the dimension that I was waking up to in the hospital that day. Mm. Everything changed. It's never gone back. Wow, thank <laughs> you so much, Dale. I wish we had so much more time to talk. And I, I hope that you're able to express all of this further than just the film. Um, because I do think that your insight is going to be helpful for a lot of people. This is really amazing, and I appreciate your testimony. You are a blessing, and you're the you're being used of God in your mm -hmm. life. Bless you, mm -hmm. live long, Thank you. and do His will. Our mm -hmm. prayers are with you, sweetheart. Thank you.